Welcome back to Theme Park Wizardry of the Carly Caramana. I hope I said that Woo! last name correctly here. After <laughs> so many months of playing, we finally got her on. How are you? I am so great, and I am very happy to be here. I'm glad this worked out. Same. You've been on so many adventures. I can't wait to hear about all about them. What has been your favorite adventure this past Ooh. few months? Recently... I actually just went on my first cruise for the first time in like five years. So that was about two weeks ago. And I actually had a really good time. It was really nice. I ended up going to Disney World after. And it was kind of like a nice relaxation before going to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's nice. What cruise did you go on? So it was a Holland America ship. It was New Amsterdam. I've never cruised with Holland America. It was excellent. Highly recommend it for anyone thinking about cruising. The service and the food was unlike anything I've ever experienced. Wow, that's pretty cool. So you did go on a Disney cruise. Interesting, interesting. Yes. Maybe, maybe this summer I may be going on a Disney cruise. So. <laughs> you know, on the Disney wish per se. Wink, wink, maybe, nudge, nudge. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, man. So what... Disney World Park, did you go to all of them? Um, I'm trying to remember. It was pretty low key. I just did a couple days with my uh, mother and sister, uh, ate around Epcot, and then uh, did some Animal Kingdom, Nomad Lounge is one of my favorites. I love just building up to the bar, having some drinks. Their food is fabulous. And then we went over to Universal and we did Bonne Gras because we were riding in the floats. Oh. Nice, nice. What's yes. your favorite Disney World park? Ooh, probably Epcot. Maybe. I, I mean, I always loved it as a kid. I never understand how people are like, Epcot is not for kids. It is for kids. There's so many incredible rides. Like even before, you know, Remy and stuff. I I love mm -hmm. Under the Sea Nemo and Friends. I love Spaceship Earth. I love living with the land. And of course, I love, you know, visiting all the countries and eating. And I got married there. So it'll always Oh, kind of, okay. So yeah. Kind of so manage over you. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be a yeah. special thing for me always. Yeah. So what's your favorite part about Epcot? Um, probably just the eating and drinking part. You know, <laughs> that is my favorite mm -hmm. element. I love I love yeah. the cast members. A lot of them have worked there for so long. So it's always it's always nice to see a familiar face. And I think that's why I have such, you know, a nice place in my heart for it. So no connection there. Because see, Epcot's actually my least favorite Disney World park. So that's why I was very curious to see why that was your most favorite. But I yeah. see why. A lot of personal things going on. I have no right. personal connection to you. So, you know, to me, it's just, you know, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I like the, the countries other than that. Except with the Guardians of the Galaxy, it's going to shoot up a little bit. It's going to yeah. shoot up. Just I, I'm very excited for Cosmic Rewind. Oh, God. Yes, me too. Are you going to go to the preview for that? Uh, I'm hoping to, yeah. So I'm hoping to. We're still waiting on, you know, all the D23 stuff goes out tomorrow, AP previews. So hopefully I'll be there in May to be one of the first. Uh oh. <laughs> we have people. But alas, that's super cool. Um, let's see what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. So how did you get your start in as a theme park journalist? Yeah, I mean, I just, theme parks are kind of all I've ever known, you know, and it's like, I get messages all the time, like, how did you get into theme park? How did you start writing about them? And I'm like, honestly, I just have been going them since I was a baby. That is what my family always loved. That's what we've always done. And so it is probably the topic I know more than anything else in the world. So it was kind of only natural for me to go into writing about them because I'm confident in, you know, my abilities. I know exactly what I'm talking about and it's just it's what I love and it's what I enjoy doing and after going to parks for over 30 years I still love it I'll come back exhausted after you know whirlwind trip and hours later I'm like oh I can't wait to be back there <laughs> you know I, I just I can't get enough and I don't really ever see that changing 
Oh, wow. You know, see, that's super cool. I have also been going to parks since I was like at least two. Um, first number is three, but two is when I was on it. I just remember my mom, like, the earliest memory of Disneyland was when my dad was forcing me to go on every single ride. And I was so mad at <laughs> him for it. And now I love every single ride. <laughs> but yeah, that was such a great memory, I guess, because it's, it's still stuck in my mind, like, super vividly. It's crazy. Right, but, exactly. Um, that's like my earliest memories are in theme parks. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, like what well, what was your first theme park? Do you remember? Oh, I I mean I know it was it was somewhere in Disney World. I don't I can't remember because it was I've been going since I was like an infant, you know. But uh we mm -hmm. always annual pass holders ever since annual pass holders were a thing, you know, in the late eighties. Mm -hmm. So I wish I could remember, but some <laughs> of my early are just you know on parks i have just little like little clips you know i can see in my mind <laughs> nice nice um let's see oh and one of your adventures recently was a peppa pig how was yes. peppa pig and I you went on daddy's pig. daddy's pig what's it called daddy's pig coaster or something yes. the number one really coaster cool. in america so wow it's designed to be a kid's first roller coaster. So the whole park is really for kids maybe ages two to four years old. It is a certified autism center. So they really take into consideration every kid's needs, kids with sensory needs. It's really well done. There is, I think the most impressive part is there's so many playscapes. So you could really bring your kid there and it's not just a playground. These are elaborately themed. There's water structures, you know, tree houses. So there's just so much to do. And it's like, I went there without a kid, just with adults and we loved it. You know, we went on daddy's roller coaster. We did everything and it was just, it's great. I mean, if you have kids, I could totally see it being worth it to get that annual pass and just bring them somewhere that's really for them you know there's no other parks that cater to that really small child yeah you know you know you said two to four but I don't know I was looking at it and I was like hmm, I'm 25 but I might want to spend a day there you could yeah I mean it's right across the street from Legoland so you could do a little half day at Peppa Pig and then that's exactly what I did is I stayed there for about five or six hours and then walked right across the street and went into Legoland and did all their coasters. Exactly. And, you know, it's more themed than the Six Flags Park, so it's automatic win in my book. You yeah. know? And then he hopped over somehow to Dollywood. I don't think he, like, ever came home <laughs> to Dollywood. Yes, I ever was that? Did you meet Dolly? Yeah, so um, I went there for the preview for the new season that just kicked off. It's their 36th season, I believe, now. Uh, it was incredible. It was a beautiful day. And it's her tradition when the park opens, she comes and appears and does a little parade through the park. And I was able to go to kind of a special Aww. ceremony she did. She performed. It was really special. And, I mean, it's just such a great annual tradition for so many people that love Dollywood and – it's one of my favorite theme parks in the country. It's so quaint. It's so homey. But at the same time, it has some of the best roller coasters. You know, that's one of my bucket list theme parks. Oh, it's like, yeah. It's like Nuts Bay Farm, but bigger. Right, exactly. So it has a lot of the same charm of Knott's Berry Farm's like ghost town area. So yeah. you, you love it. I love Knott's Berry Farm too. Yeah, I know. I feel like it's like basically like ghost town, but a whole theme park of ghost town, which is exactly. super cool. Exactly. Yeah. It's really, really cool. And there's, um, I love, you know, the mine, the train ride at a, a Knott's Berry Farm. So you'll get a lot of those same kind of elements at Dollywood. Wow. See, yeah, and that's, that's, uh, that's in Tennessee, right? Yeah. It's just outside of Knoxville, so it's in the Smoky Mountains. Perfecto. I'm gonna, so, you wrote an article. You, one of the places you write for is Business Insider, and you wrote an article about working inside Universal, but remotely. Yes. How cool is that? How is yeah, that experience? Was so much fun. So, I spent a lot of time in LA, and so for a good chunk of last year after the park had reopened after COVID and everything. I was living in LA and just behind Universal Studios Hollywood. So I was like, you know what, instead of, you know, getting an office space, 
I'm going to just go work from Universal and see how their Wi-Fi is. And I was able to go from there every single day. I'd go for a little walk, walk down the hill and work from there. And it was an amazing experience. It's a really great park, especially during the week in the off season. It's not too crazy. It doesn't get like the other parks get. It is a wonderful place. I kind of just like fell in love. I mean, I've been there before, of course, but just spending a lot of time there was really fun and really made me appreciate the park because a lot of people overlook it. They say it's too small, but I think mm -hmm. it's just perfect as it is, you know, and there's some amazing rides. Uh, Jurassic World is now one of my favorite rides and I would go on it almost every Mine single day. Too. Incredible. It is so much better than the Universal Orlando version. Um, Secret Life of Pets also an incredible attraction it is one of my favorite now one of my favorite rides i think in the country it's so well done and mm -hmm. i just that's the I queue the yeah the queue is amazing i mean going up to those doors and looking in it is just mm -hmm. amazing that's super cool. yeah that's uh that's super cool especially working better than working in like renting an office which is pretty awesome absolutely yeah exactly which is what i had done before and this was mm -hmm. so much better you know as you know a universal annual pass is so inexpensive when you think of it compared to a lot of other things so it is a win-win for sure yeah and after i read that article about the wi-fi i started to use the Wi-Fi, including recently on busy days to try to upload the video because my videos, because it was taking so long, it went from like yeah. two hours to like 10 seconds. I'm like, whoa, Carly's yes. right. Their Wi-Fi is they're, really they're good. Wi -Fi good. Uh, it's really I told good. the team member, your Wi-Fi is good. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it is wow. Good. Yeah, I had no issues. I mean, I really mostly am on email and working in Word, so I don't really use a lot, but it works perfect for me. <laughs> Yeah, I know because I'm so I'm kind of say I'm scarred from Disneyland's Wi-Fi. It's pretty bad. So, right, I um, agree with you. That's why I was like, eh, I don't know about other theme parks Wi-Fi, but yeah, Universal's one was like on point. It is, and it's like that at uh, Universal Orlando too because I've worked from there. My husband's had to work from there with some video stuff, and Universal Orlando's Wi-Fi also on point. So if you need to work, there are some great spots there as well. Wow. Absolutely wow. fantastic, man. So, what's your favorite so healthy part? And you've so been your healthy. least favorite. God, it's probably now, like, just because Universal Studios Hollywood has such a soft spot in my heart because I've gotten to know mm -hmm. so many people there really well. That and also Disneyland. I love Disneyland. It is just, I, I it's, you can't even yeah. put it into words. And it's, I, I grew up with that world. So, Disneyland, I mean, I've been an annual pass holder there for years now, and I can never get enough. There's just a certain authenticity you feel when you walk inside. You know mm -hmm. Walt was there. You know he had his hand in creating things there, and it's just, it's such a special, special place. And the food there is some of the best theme park food. Mostly all of their snacks. Oh, snack they Disneyland's food is chef's kiss. It is chef's kiss. Their quick service options are some of the most unique, best, executed well. Some of my favorite things to snack on are there. I rarely honestly go for, you know, a table service meal at Disneyland. I'm usually just, you know, going from Bengal barbecue to tropical hideaway. You know, I'm just kind of mm -hmm. snacking all around. And the cool thing about Disneyland is because, you know, a lot of people are annual pass holders. They bring out like a lot of seasonal food and different types of food, get people to come back. So it's even better that way. Right. They always get me, especially the Jolly Holiday sandwich that always changes is always so good. I still am like dreaming of the Halloween version last year that had the salsa roja chicken, dipping it into like a tortilla soup. It was amazing. I'm not sure if you had it. I did not, but that sounds very good. But I'm was curious what you thought for the Food and Wine Festival. Everyone hated this mac and cheese, and I never had it because everyone seemed I, to not like it. Did uh, you taste it? I did. You know what? I actually did a story for Yahoo. So I went out uh, towards the beginning of the festival, and I tried it for a story for Yahoo. I liked it. I didn't hate it. It was unique. It was Whoa. different. I, I, didn't, I did not hate it. I mean, trust me, there are some things that Disney – food and wine festivals of both coasts that are not great items. This 
maybe was polarizing because it, there was a lot going on. But once you kind of mix everything together, I didn't hate it. You know? And wow. Like, I, yeah. I like Thai peanut noodles. So it was kind of mm -hmm. the savoriness of Thai peanut noodles that was, and the sweetness of the strawberry stuff just kind of cut that savoriness. I didn't hate mm -hmm. it. I ended up eating the whole thing, actually. <laughs> That's crazy. You're like the only person I know. That's right. so interesting. <laughs> yes, I, I wow. try to give everything a chance, you know. But <laughs> so, what was your it. what was your favorite item from the food and wine Ooh. list? I, you know what, I loved. There was a honey almond cold brew that was really good. There was a Impossible Meat Euro inspired flatbread uh, from LA Delights that was right in front of Monsters Inc. And I think that may have been my favorite thing. It had a really nice spice to it. Uh, mm. But there were actually, this was my favorite Disney California Adventure food festival in a long time. Maybe I think my, my favorite ever. Yeah, I, there were a lot of good foods for me this year. So I was really impressed. Uh, I had a really good time. Wow. Yeah, there wow. were a lot of good foods. Everyone go check out that favorite food because it's still going on until what the 24th? 24th. Yes. Yeah. You have two weeks to check out this the yes. best food and wine festival ever, according to Carly. Ever. Yes. At Disney oh, California yeah. Adventure. <laughs> Man. And speaking of food festivals, actually, remember, you obviously remember that Universal had the taste of Universal when they couldn't open. I think they should bring that back. Hopefully they do bring that back. I hope so. They have been doing a lot of really good seasonal stuff during fall and winter. Uh, they had some really great stuff. They had a uh, turkey chowder that was in a bread bowl. I'm not sure if you tried it. It was really, really good. So they've been kind of toying with it, and I'm hoping that they continue doing that because they're kind of revving up that whole mm -hmm. alarm of them. So I'm happy with what they have going on. Exactly. What's your favorite restaurant at Universal? At Universal. Okay, that's kind of hard. So usually if I'm doing, if I'm there during the day and mm. I just kind of want, you know, like a snack or a small lunch, I'll mm. go downstairs to Jurassic and I'll get, there's like a kid's pulled pork slider with fries that mm. is so good. And it's just like just the right amount of food. Love it. Uh, if I'm if it's a little cold, Minions Cafe has a grilled cheese with tomato mm. soup that I mm. love. But usually mm. I'm just kind of snacking. Of course, in Wizarding World, there's so many good bites. I will do the traditional English breakfast all day, every day, if it was available. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I have to say, I really like, I like the crusty burger because I like those crusty yeah. burgers. My but issue is that it's usually very busy. It's usually so, very what? Busy. There's oh, usually yeah. like a yeah. line anywhere that's where the line is. Yeah. So usually I, that's yes. not what I get yeah. just because of that reason, but mm. that is excellent. My, my ultimate favorite restaurant. Ever since I tried the ribs at the Three Broomsticks, I was like, wow, this is one of the best theme park restaurants I've ever been to in my life. I can't I believe I had, they had better ribs than some restaurants outside of theme parks. I was like, whoa. I, was I agree. Yeah, no, Three three Broomsticks is excellent. Also, sometimes I'll get, they have a kid's mac and cheese, and it mm. has those beautiful thick cut steak fries and grapes, and mm. it is so good. And with your AP discount, I think it's like seven dollars or something and it is a really good lunch very filling the mac and cheese is so creamy and just to sit outside back there it's so relaxing i'm gonna have to try that the kids mac and cheese yeah. mac and cheese yeah get it it is really good you get a beer from hopping pot next door you are like because i'm high. a massive mac and cheese fan so i'm yeah, doing the next time i go there for sure. Okay. So, what is your so your favorite ride at Universal's Jurassic World? You said, but what's your favorite yeah. ride at Disneyland? Knots and Six Flags. If you go to Six Flags. Oh, see, I don't do Six Flags. I just, 
I just have never been, you know, I actually grew up in New Jersey by Six Flags Great Adventure. I mm -hmm. am a sucker for theming. So I need a theme park. I can't just do the straight. <laughs> I need to be dazzled. I need to be wowed. I need all of that. Um, and Disneyland, it's probably, I love doing Haunted Mansion there and I love Indiana Jones. So usually if I am starting, if my starting park is Disneyland, you know, you have to make your park reservation. I'm probably running to Indiana Jones. That is one of my favorites. I, you know, when it's ever, whenever it's under refurbishment, I'm like, oh my God, I just, I love that ride so much. And then probably, you know, Haunted Mansion there is just, it's so good. I think it's the way you walk up to it and it's just so majestic. It kind of feels like, the ride already starts before you even get into the queue for it. Cause it is mm -hmm. just such a different experience. I think than the Walt Disney world ride, just cause you could see the mansion from so far away. And, mm -hmm. and, and ours I, is an actual stretching room. Right. Exactly. Um, and then at, so you have so many at DCA. I love guardians of the galaxy mission breakout. <laughs> love that, that one. It has, it's so much fun to just, sing and just you just I don't know there's like a sense of camaraderie between everyone it is just so amazing and that is probably I think that's now in my like top five of favorite attractions of all times it is just pure silly joy and then when it's monsters after dark I lose it I love that too <laughs> monsters after dark is my favorite iteration of any theme park ride ever I, I love it so I, I, love it. I love it. I mean, and during the season, I will line up because it changes over at three o'clock. I'll be in line at two thirty when they let you start lining up for Monsters After Dark. Mm -hmm. And every time I'm there, I will ride it because it right. is so good. Never want them to change it. <laughs> Same, like Guardians of the Yeah, that's my favorite ride probably in the world. And then Monsters After Dark just. It's, excels it but yeah guardians of the galaxy i've always it's one of those rides that always come out with a smile on my face no matter if i'm super oh, tired yeah, exactly. i'm super tired with my legs are dangling like i can't walk as soon as i go on guardians of the galaxy whoo i'm ready to go second round let's right. go yeah. right. it's yeah. you know it's, it's just it's so fun and there's not that many things that you can do that you're just like this is a blast and it is a blast the entire time I love that one. And then as my second favorite is Splash Mountain, but also Rise of the Resistance. It's kind of tied there, you know, for different yes. reasons. That's hard. But, yeah, Rise is so good. It's so long. It's immersive. It is unlike mm -hmm. anything. It's it's great. That's a great attraction too. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. And then let's see. At Universal, my favorite ride is drastic but it really switches between harry potter and the mummy i love all three so much but the new indominus rex takes jurassic world just above those other two for me i i agree so i'm there i'm at universal hollywood a lot alone so i would always do forbidden journey single rider uh the mummy always had a single rider i don't know if it's going to come back after the refurb yeah uh, all the lower and, level single riders are gone i'm very upset Right. So that those are kind of always like my go-to. I would do Jurassic single rider. So those are, I mean, those are just incredible. At least, though, at least after three, you get expressed. So that's good. Right. Exactly. So that works. Uh, but no, the, I, I love the mummy there. And a lot of people like the universal Orlando version better, but I don't know why I like the one in Hollywood better. Yeah, I like definitely Hollywood better after the upgrade. I like the Hollywood definitely yeah. version better. Um, speaking of ho Universal, though, do you go to Horror Nights? I do. Yep. Yeah. I've, uh, I've been I going do. since. I excited are you? Yeah. yeah. So I, I've been doing Horror Nights since I was a kid. My parents were into it. So I, I think my first Horror Nights was probably when I was maybe like, nine or something years old I've, I've never been like afraid of them always been into it so i've been going to you know the orlando ones for a long time uh this past year i was in la at the time of universal studios hollywood's halloween horror night and i went to that probably like a dozen times <laughs> a lot yeah I, I almost, I was thinking I might as well get a frequent fear pass, but I realized they guess I didn't need it because they got a free ticket on, you know, the platinum one and I just paid one other time. 
But right. now, um, what is your favorite? What is your? I don't know if you know the most anticipated or the speculation map for Hollywood this year. But if you do, if not, I'll tell you. But what's your most anticipated maze? If you do, so I'm curious about the weekend one because I just want to see what that's going to be all about. You know, so Same. <laughs> yeah, I, like, because I remember. I remember in 2020, before the park shut down, the spec map had Billy Eilish was amazing. I'm like, first yeah. I thought she was just performing. Then I'm like, wait, no, they mean the actual maze. I'm like, interesting. What could this be about? Now, of course, the weekends, here's like, hmm, what could that? But then I was thinking, you know, his music videos are kind of like Halloween y. I feel, like, okay. I feel like there's a lot of costuming that could happen. So I'm very interested in what could happen there. Exactly. I would love to see it. It sounds so different. And obviously music is such a big part of Halloween Horror Nights. So it's, I'm not even per se like a weekend fan, but I would be a fan mm -hmm. of a house that kind of utilizes music into the story, lyrics are story driven. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to see what happens there. I would love a Killer Clowns from Outer Space house again. That's like one of my favorite movies of all time. So that is like on my wishes to come back. It was at Orlando years ago. They had the street atmosphere of it years ago. So that would be my hope. But it seems like their construction is kind of rocking and rolling in Hollywood. You know, we've seen all the shots and everything. Oh, yeah. Hollywood is just, Hollywood's building those mazes. And like, um, what we got? I heard the curse of La Arona. I always mispronounce, but I'm going to say that. Yeah. Um, I wasn't. I didn't go to Hornets back in 2012, so I never been in. But I heard it's like a really good maze. So I'm really excited for that one because it yeah, looks no, like it's it, confirmed because of the structure. But exactly. um, and the weekend looks that. like yeah, yeah, it looks like the weekend's also is confirmed because I never. He just doesn't stop tweeting about it, so I feel like he can't be tweeting about right. Hornets as much without having a maze. <laughs> yeah, I've never exactly. seen anyone tweet about Hornets as much. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm like he would not be tweeting about this. Or someone would tell him to stop. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, either he's a really big fan, but he would be tweeting about every year if he's a really big fan. So he definitely has a mace, <laughs> yeah. which is I great. Think that's really almost confirmed. confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm interested. It's I just like the idea of the mummy, a mummy maze, me next to the mummy or the ride. So I just really like that. So I hope that is the mummy maze that also looks to be confirmed by the structure, according to multiple people. So, yeah. set up that one. Yeah. And the terror better. Do you like the terror tram? I am obsessed with the terror tram. So, the purge last year, I did so many times. Oh. It was so much fun. I loved it. I love when you walk through the world, the world set. I love when you go past Bates Motel. I love everything about it. I don't know why. I just love it. I can go to Horror Nights and do yeah. just that and be happy. <laughs> I like the ter I like the I like the idea of the terror tram, but the execution after one time, I feel like definitely could be better. And only because it's usually a massive group of people in a big wide space. I feel like if they really shrank the spaces to make it like more claustrophobic, um, instead of just kind of yeah. like a walkthrough thing. Um, and I'm just so glad I can't get rid of the purge. I love the purge as a movie, but I feel like it's such a lazy IP for the terror channel. I don't know. Right. But it's definitely easy to execute on a grand scale because it's really just people with crazy costumes jumping at you. You know, it's not exactly. really but it would be really hard to I mean, there's so many team members working on that. So it would just yeah. be hard to do something, but I mean, I have fun. It's silly. It's just a goofy good time. It's definitely silly. Yeah, it's definitely like, and I like going with a first, like, someone's never been on it because they're like actually terrified. Of, I'm never getting off the tram. What's going on? And I like, I love yeah. laughing at them. <laughs> it's great. Yes, I love the but, lady with the baby in the video, and then you pull up and oh, get yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. So I feel like if they just made it a little. The walking part a little shorter and condensed it so that we're in those because when we get to the Bates Motel and you kind of go in those tight hallways, I'm like, oh, okay, it's getting good now because we're in those. It's like an actual maze at that point. I'm right. like, hmm, if we can get more like that, I feel like Terra Shan would be ten times better. But it's it definitely is entertaining. Um, it is. It's fun. It's it, fun. 
And the fact that that could, that's something that can never, ever, 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 ever be done in Orlando because they don't have a studio tour. So, ha, ha. They do, they do not. So, it is a true original. It is reason to go to Hollywood Horror Nights in Hollywood. <laughs> exactly. Um, and to have the Wizarding World of Harry Potter open, which is cool. Um, yes. But see, so what is your most anticipated addition to any theme for a coming? Nothing rumored, but things that are confirmed, like Guardians of the Galaxy, Nintendo. It uh, is. Well, I think just because this is so soon, it's going to be Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind right now. Very, very, yeah, very. Like a couple of years. Like some cast yeah. members. Yeah. It's very, very, very excited. Um I love indoor roller coasters. I think this is going to be amazing. I love anything that's music driven. And we know this is going to be all about the music. The story is really cool from what we've seen in the teaser videos. Uh, Crush's Coaster at Disneyland Paris is one of my favorites. That one looks really cool. Yeah. So this is sort of similar the way you're in the spinning vehicle. But this is obviously going to be next level since it's the biggest indoor roller coaster ever. So I am ready for that. And I think I'm most excited just because it's so soon. You know, we only have like a month to go. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because, I don't know, I love going backwards. So reverse launch just sounds really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, that, that is crazy. That a big climb, like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to be great. My hype is up here, so I hope it meets that. And are you excited to go ride Tron in 2075? <laughs> if it ever happens, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, I do go on the people mover a lot, and I always look over, and I'm like, wow, they're really making progress. It's happening. It's happening. So yeah, I mean, it's gonna, it's, that, it's really progressing. And then they're gonna just stop again because uh, wait a second, it's too early. We have to wait fifty years, and then they're gonna open it for everybody. <laughs> right. So my my hopes are not high for that yet because I need to wait until it's closer so we have some sort of date. But I am excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited when that comes. Like I'd have to like see it printed on the construction wall, like opening twenty. Exactly, exactly. Let's let's keep our hopes minimum. <laughs> oh, man. And um let's see if you're... so you obviously went to the new feature the new Nintendo store in the feature presentation. What did you buy? I got myself that blue Super Nintendo World shirt with the little it's like those two graphics, two big graphics. That was super cool. Yes, I actually refrained from buying a ton and I got the blue shirt, like you said, with the graphics. Because I only was like, I'm only going to get stuff that is branded with Super Nintendo World. Because they, exactly. yeah. they have a lot of stuff that doesn't say that on there. I'm like, I'm only buying yeah. stuff that is yeah. Super Nintendo World. So I got that and I got a little Mario keychain that has a little kind of placard on it that is branded. And then uh, I got for my friends the hat and the hit bag. But I'm kind of going to keep it, you know, pretty cool until next year. I think that was a good little starter. Uh, mm -hmm. I love all the character merch. But, again, I wanted to say Super Nintendo World. So if maybe I can get a Yoshi shirt that says Super Nintendo World, I will be buying that. <laughs> yeah, I told myself I'm going in there, but I'm only coming out with something that's, like, unique. That I can't go buy at Target. I want a Super yeah. Nintendo World this or the Mario Kart merch. I'm like, all right, I'll get it. So I got a Mario Kart jacket the, because the one that had the hood was like a checkered flag. I'm like, that's really oh, dope. Yeah. And then they had the that really cool. I was like, wow, that was nice. Yeah. And then I got the blue no, shirt. Was so nice. Other than that, most of it's like just the characters. And I'm like, mm, that's cool, but I can go find that at Target. I want something I can uniquely get right here. Yeah. And that's what I got. I am, I am with you. I was in the same mentality. So Next year when it opens and they have more stuff that says Super Nintendo World, I will be buying all that stuff. <laughs> like, I even want to keep the bag that they gave me because, yeah, Super Nintendo yes, The bag is so cool. And I keep bags. Like, I, if it's a cool bag, I'm keeping it. It's a very easy thing yeah, to say. Exactly. And um, I'll obviously for sure be getting a power band because I'm not missing out those interactive games later on. That's going to be super cool. Yes. I want to jump up on a block. Boom! Me too. I, I can't wait for that. That is probably after Guardians. That is definitely what I'm most excited about. It feels tangible. We see the construction there. When you're going down that escalator, 
they really like get stuff done. <laughs> yeah, and the really cool thing is when uh when I left the store and I went to go film the the update, a lot more people ever since the store opened was like, oh my gosh, look, it's right there, and they look so excited. I'm like, oh, I'm happy for you. <laughs> Yes, I know. It's been there. It's been so obvious, but I'm glad you're seeing it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, 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 oh, and a lot of little kids are like, oh, look, there's the Mario World. I'm like, oh, look, he's so excited. I can't wait for him to come back later on and get to ride it, the ride. Yes, the but, hype yeah. is real, and it is, it'll like, come here sooner than we know it. <laughs> like, super close, just several months away. Much yeah. better than <clears throat> Sean. <clears throat> Exactly. <laughs> Man, I can make Sean jokes all day. It's great. <laughs> so which one? So what's your next adventure? My next adventure, I am actually going next week to Silver Dollar City. Have you ever been? I haven't, but another place looks gorgeous. Basically, I feel like it's like a smaller Dollywood. Bigger yeah, ghost towns happening again, like super yeah. nice. It is incredible. It's themed to the 18, so it's even more of a ghost town feel than Dollywood. They have incredible coasters, incredible food. Uh, I'm so excited. So I'm going with some friends there next week. So this I cannot time? Wait. No, I've been there before, but it'll be my wow. first time this season. They just they just opened for the season, so. There's some oh, exciting stuff going on there, yeah. Super cool, man. Enjoy that. And yes, thank, thank you, you so much. much for being on the channel. Yes, this was so fun. We have so much stuff that we love talking about, so it was great. <laughs> exactly. And everyone, go follow Carly on Twitter at Carly Caramana. And, or, yeah, Carly Caramana. And definitely go check out her articles on Business Insider. Wait, you're on the Attractions podcast. And what else are you on? You're like everything. Yes. So I write for Yahoo. I do a lot of food theme park stuff for MASH. So I'm kind of everywhere. I post everything on Twitter, like you said. And then I also have adventuresbycarly.com where I post my latest and greatest articles. <laughs> you see why she's never home, guys? She's all those places, yeah. working for all those places. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And if you like this video, please subscribe. And as always, have a fantastic day. Hold on.